What up, people? It's uh, Jason here from Custom Cans, and today I'm going to be answering two very niche questions that hardly anyone in the world wants the answer to. The first one being, can you replace the power socket on this original Microsoft Surface Book from the olden days? And secondly, and probably more importantly, can someone with little or no experience replace a complex surface mount component without any practice? Now then, I'm recording this intro after the event, so I already know the answer to this, and uh, it's kind of maybe, uh, but probably not. Uh, but let's just join me on this journey and let's find out what happens. So the problem is a couple of the pins in the socket on the on the keyboard have burnt out, and it doesn't matter which way up you plug it, it doesn't charge up. Uh, on these older ones, also once the battery's died, you can't detach the screen, and as this has got a completely dead battery, we've got to get that off. There's no emergency release on the original ones as far as I know, so you have to jam something in here and just kind of lever the screen off until it goes pop. Uh, obviously be careful, but uh, at this point we're at last resort kind of stuff. Mine has been kept in a case, and as I've been in there a couple of times and replaced the keyboard and I've replaced the card reader in the past, the bottom isn't really stuck on very well. But if you need to know how to unstick it, check out our other Surface video where I unstick it on there. But here I can just lever it up by one of the holes and it'll kind of come unstuck quite easily. There we go, we're in. The money shot. And uh, det detach the battery base, yeah, with that connector there. That's pretty straightforward. This is the actual power board. Just going to detach that, which leads over to the card reader and a couple of other, and the USBs, sorry. That just pulls up. There's about seven or eight screws, I think, holding this all together. Just need to undo those. I think it's a T5 screw, which we're, uh, which, which, which they're held down with. Next, you want to unplug the main cable that goes to the screen. There's a, a little door that you have to lift up, a little, yeah, kind of bar that you have to lift up and then it unclips. Remove the power board. Here is the replacement socket that I managed to order. I think these are about 30 or 40 pounds. So they're quite expensive and uh, looking at it is terrifying. I haven't totally counted them, but I'm pretty certain there's about 1.2 million pins on there that you have to solder slash unsolder. Now, I have no previous experience. I've never removed a surface mount socket or many surface mount components, but I've watched a couple of videos and they say heat up the board. So I've got it on our little mobile phone screen remover. I've got it set to 120 degrees just to get some heat into the board. I'm putting some uh, flux on the solder joints and then the idea is to just hit it up with some hot air and hopefully lever it away. And this, dear viewer, is where it all went wrong. I, I tend to be a little bit impatient sometimes and it wasn't coming away so I've weighed it down there. You see I'm quite applying quite a lot of pressure. The board's bending slightly. I'm really yanking on that socket. And uh, yeah, I just got kind of, I just kept applying more and more pressure until it all went wrong, kind of. Um, yeah, unfortunately, as you can see, I managed to pull off loads of the traces from the board. But there were three either side which were larger than all the others, so I'm going to assume that they are power and they stayed attached. So there is still hope at this point. My, I've got to admit, my, my heart sunk quite badly and I, I hated myself for... Uh, <laughs> for applying too much pressure. But as I said, I've never done this before. I don't know the pitfalls. Hopefully you can learn from my Watsits and let it heat up a bit longer and make sure the solder's melted. Don't try and shoot a video while you're doing it, especially if it's your first time, because uh, you can't look at stuff properly while you're, cause you don't want to get your head in the way of the camera. Next, um, as you can see, I've applied a bit of uh, solder paste, low temperature stuff. It's 183 degrees, something like that. And then I'm positioning the socket in place, holding it down the whole time, praying to holy jeebus the, 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 <laughs> that I haven't completely ruined it. So here we're heating it up and at this point I can see better. I've got a, got a, I can see the solder joints. So you're just waiting for them to uh, kind of bead up and the solder just all kind of sucks up into the place. I did have one bridged connection and what I did was I used a scalpel and heated it up and just broke that uh, bridge of solder between them. They just, it, it all went surprisingly well. I've never done, as I said, I've not really done much surface mount stuff, but uh, it was, Certainly attaching things was pretty easy. Removing them, eh, not so much. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm sure if you had to solder all 4,500 pins, some of them would go wrong, but I'm mainly aiming for the six big pins, just hoping that that's something. So we put it all back together, and uh, I'm, I'm not hopeful, but my fingers are crossed. Plug in the cable, and no light. No light on there. Should light up when, it, when it's getting power, and the other way up. No light. Ah, mother flipper. 
but thought I'd just check anyway if it was just a connection that went to the light. So the power, it won't power up at the moment. I plug the cable in, hit on, and holy flip, it's uh, it's only done, gone and worked. So yeah, so the little light on the side of the charger no longer lights up when you plug it in, but it does now get power to the base. So that's how the operation went, and the question you've got is, uh, did it work? And uh, it bloody well did. <laughs> it didn't go perfectly. I'll never be able to plug in a docking station or anything anymore, but I can get power to it. And that was the main thing. The little light doesn't come on, but it charges up just fine. It took a couple of goes to get it to charge initially, just because the battery was at 0% and the power management system was stopping it from charging properly, but uh, that's a common problem. If you need to know how to do it, you basically just press and hold the power button for 10 seconds so that it completely shuts down and then leave it on charge overnight with it not fired up. Uh, yeah, so don't do not do a shutdown. Press and hold the power button until it boom and just dies. Plug in the power, leave it overnight, it'll charge up. Happy days. But yeah, it's all back up and it's back up and running. So um, it just goes to show. Sometimes you've just got to be a bit brave and not give up. Because my God, when those pads came off the board, I thought it was game over, and uh, yeah, my heart sank. But uh, but yes, there was just enough pins left of the appropriate flavour to allow it to charge. So uh, so happy days. It all worked. Um, I hope that was vaguely interesting, and it just goes to show that uh, a I don't really know what I'm doing <laughs> but I'll goddamn give it a go and sometimes you know just just so you, you get lucky things work out it's it's all gravy baby so yeah it's been awesome hanging out and uh, I'll see you guys again